Welcome to Gen Z Hoops, the Gen Z basketball coaching and sports business show. On this podcast, you'll learn from professional players, coaches, and executives from all over the world and see the court in a brand new way. And now, joining you courtside, your Gen Z host, John Hartafillis. Gen Z Hoops here with avid supporter of the podcast, back, back from Big Fellas Basketball, right, from day one, uh, episode 11, Mr. Ryan Kennedy. Great having you on the show again. Um, you you, you kind of told me his mm-hmm. detailed things coming on. You knew I had Coleman on my show, Drew Hanna on my show. Yes. And I'm not as big of a trainer as you are, obviously. I've kind of been more into the coaching side. Yep. You're, you're, you're all about this stuff. What, what yep. made this a must-go-to for you? Um, just the, the professionals they had given demonstrations. I mean, it was a no-brainer coming here to gain all that useful knowledge. I'm a basketball head, man. This is what I love. So any chance I get to come, and obviously it helps me improve my craft as a trainer, getting to learn from the best. So get a nice trip to Miami out of it. I mean, met a lot of great people along the way, got to network. I mean, it was so far has been an overall great experience. Getting to play in the detail gym. We've done a lot of cool things. Maybe there, even some that weren't expected, right? I mean, it's been a fun time Dizzy, all yeah. around. Let's think about maybe today, right? I mean, I was sitting next to you the whole time. You were just constantly putting down notes, and you were looking like someone say something. You look at me like, "Yo, this yeah. is this is this is gonna get this is added to the grind city training curriculum." What are some of those things that jumped off the page today? What really jumped off the page to me um, with Tim was definitely talking about how he follows up with all his clients he maintains a really good relationship with his players he has those kind of post-workout conversations that was very eye-opening which is stuff I do but I definitely realize I need to do more of because that is kind of very important at the end of the day because you're not just I don't want to be known just as like a, a basketball trainer to him like I want them to be able to come to me with anything and just have our time together in the gym like something they really look forward to doing and he kind of was describing it as a form of therapy like I would love that for them too like just a place where they feel safe to to be themselves Um, so I really appreciated Tim's presentation Um, Drew Hanlon I mean he's just a oh yeah he's kind of blow you away with his basketball knowledge bro and just the the amount of hours he puts into watching film and the the minute details he's able to identify when breaking down drills and and just kind of the way like when he brought out demonstrators and stuff and they would mess something up the way he was kind of able to give them different things to look for set them up in different ways that would help them kind of get to get to where they got to get to faster so that kind of made me realize like i need to be the same way like there's stuff I do that I need to do less of and I need to just kind of find quicker ways to get to the point like they were talking about prolonging the the training process you know so I got to find ways to kind of help them discover things quicker and kind of more naturally Paul Fabritz I mean he's just an expert in the field of um, sports performance obviously I've watched all his skills training stuff as well too but I, I love the injury prevention everything he talked about so I mean I had so much fun today, bro. It was it was definitely special. Tomorrow might be even better, which is great. Right? We've met so many people today that we're going to continue to talk to tomorrow and also meet new people. Yeah. Right. So we have all our we have all our boys that we played with just now. And we're also going to meet new people tomorrow. Mm-hmm. What are you maybe most excited for tomorrow? Really soaking some more knowledge, building on what you have today, and going and getting onto that flight tomorrow to go back home, knowing full well you're ready for this upcoming season. Um, well, since high school, I've been a big Devin Williams fan. I watched the first 10,000 hours series. And I still watch the, the recent ones he's released, which are crazy. Like his his kind of video editing and um, storytelling skills have come such a long way. And just his journey with basketball and stuff, I love it, bro. I, lo- I love what he does. So I'm, I'm very excited for his presentation tomorrow. Uh, Michael Lancaster was someone I remember stumbling across in high school. And just watching the very innovative stuff he was doing with um, basketball training. You'll get a lot of kind of like people who are like, nah, this is crazy, like... It'll never work. And then a lot of people who who see the the creativity in it and I, I'm one of those people, you know, so I'm I've always enjoyed his stuff, so I'm excited to see what he brings to the table tomorrow. Mike G, he's changed the game too now with all his movement stuff. Um and that's kinda since I stopped playing that's that's one thing I've I've become very passionate about it is movement. 
you know, I, I've started the, the boxing and I've, I've ventured into other kind of forms of sports and movement. And um, I'm, I'm excited to see what he got to bring too, man. So it's tomorrow might be better than today. We'll see. The biggest thing you said, that like creativity, there's so many different ways to make a player better. Yeah. And I, there's no one I trust more in doing that than you. So awesome be, be, being here with you. Thank you, bro. It's a special trip. Thank you for everything you do. Yo, Evan, man, what's going on? It's good. How you doing? Dude, it's crazy. It's, it's like me for the second time almost. Like we've been playing we, our playing entire childhood, right, in the Greek League, coming here, investing in ourselves, right, going, going into this craft. I've been following, right, seeing what you're doing. You're doing some big things on the training side. Tell our listeners maybe a little about what you've been up to the last year or so, really getting yourself in great shape in this training world, this shooting world, okay. and, and coming here. So the last year I've been really diving into the shooting stuff, man. Um, I'm currently building a curriculum, my new company, NYC Hoop School. So we're going to be putting out curriculum for all players, trainers, coaches, breaking down different shooting concepts. And, you know, last year's been a grind, filming every single day, but I got a lot of exciting uh, stuff to show the world. So I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait for it. And a lot of the lessons you learned here, I'm sure, are going to be huge for just expanding that, right? I mean, you were, you were, funny, the first night you were telling me all these things about the, what you, things you have in your head, and yeah. now you kind of took the lessons as to how to take action on them. What are some of those things maybe today, right? Drew Hanlon, Tim Martin, all these guys, PJF. Like, what are some of those things you're going to try to incorporate into what you're already doing? You know what? The relationships. You know, understanding that you got to connect with the player first. You got to connect with the coach, the trainer first, because once the connection is there, then everything else falls into place. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so um, that's the biggest thing I took away. And of course, there's a bunch of gems that were thrown in there. But the relationship piece for me is something I'm going to lock in once I get back to New York. Definitely. And you'll be super successful if you keep on doing that. Who are some of the guys? I mean, tomorrow, what are you most excited for? I mean, we have some big speakers coming in tomorrow. We haven't seen yet. We haven't met these guys yet. Yeah, man. So I'm really looking forward to Mike G. So I'm a big movement guy. Um, I'm big on the health side. So I'm into the diet, the grounding, the all you know, all those crazy concepts. So to see what Mike Dunn does in his industry on how he works with players and how he's moving, I can't wait to pick his brain a little bit. So that's exciting for me to even take some of those concepts, apply it back to the shooting. So get my players moving better and things like that. Well, lucky for you, when you're moving, you're going to be moving in style. Yeah, this year on Gen Z Hoops, we got you some Gen Z Hoops customized socks <laughs> with your face on them. Yo. That's how we operate here. So you will be moving in style next time you're on the court. And then Mike, gotta, G, Mike just showed you to move properly. I got to wear these on the court, bro. I got to <laughs> play in these. Oh, man, I love them. Awesome. Love them. Evan, man, what's going on? What's going on, man? What's going Dude, on, awesome meeting you here. It's been a fun week, man, right? I mean, yeah. just meet, we're coming on Friday. All the excitement building up for this whole week and how it's going to play out. How did you even get here? What are you going to happen? How did you, like, how did this whole play out for you? So I work for this company, Supreme Hoops. Okay. Um, and we have an affiliation with uh, Coleman. Nice. So I met him when we did a collab like clinic in May, and me and him chopped it up. He came cool, and then I told him like my playing history, and he asked me to be a demonstrator for the mastery class. Break down that playing history a little bit. Where, where have you kind of, what kind of, where have you seen maybe the game? So, little, little wild, up and down. Um, started playing late, 14, St. Mary's High School in Long Island. Transferred sophomore year to Holy Cross, then. Ended up playing at Stony Brook. Academically, things didn't go too well. Had some growing up to do. Transferred to St. Joseph's in Long Island. Then had a little stint in Puerto Rico. Came home. Ended up getting picked up to play for the Pacers G League. Got cut for former NBA player, which I understand. But I've always been doing training on the side as like a way to improve myself and then teach others how any I feel like anybody can do it if you work hard and instill that in the youth so I like to help inspire them with that and then now I'm probably going to play in Mexico in March that's fire like you gotta tell me more about that after but you mentioned maybe everyone might be asking about like the whole thing with the Pacers and the G League stuff right what I found cool when we were talking about this over lunch today was maybe your early days maybe not knowing the game maybe being a little new to it I was telling you how I didn't know the, how, what the foul count was I don't know how the bonus was until my senior year of high school mm. what was it like for you maybe for picking up at the first so I didn't start playing till like 14 and yo I didn't know anything like I just yo I tried to I started liking T-Mac Love Trace McGray is how I fell in love with the game. And I didn't even think, like, oh, this guy is 6'8". I'm not going <laughs> to be 6'8". Like, let me start changing who I have interest towards. Became Allen Iverson. And then I used to watch them and then go in my driveway and play by myself. I used to think if I was playing in the rain, I was getting better. Didn't know what a drill was until I transferred to Holy Cross. And it was like a 
totally different world of basketball where it was taken to a whole nother level where before that I was just playing with adults thinking, okay, this, I'm getting better. If that was a whole new level, I can't imagine what today was like where I walk into that gym with Drew Hanlon and all these high-level trainers there. Everyone that's been here has been training and coaching for years and to, everyone was blown away. Mm -hmm. But what did you maybe take away from it the most that you, you can't wait to go back and share with your kids and share with those around you? Just how important, like they really, I thought I was very obsessed with detail, but they showed me a whole another level of the detail that like I've never even thought of. And I consider myself a hard worker, like a very hard worker, but like listening to Drew say he listens to eight hours of film a day, Paul PJF saying he studies for 16 hours a day, that just like inspired me to just grind, put my head down, grind even more. It's crazy right, just seeing it right with the 1%, not even the 1% of the 1% do, and trying to model that and, and, re and replicate that in what you're doing. Uh, we're, we're maybe tomorrow, right, some big speakers coming tomorrow. Who are you maybe most excited for and you know, can't wait to just listen to the presentation, take some notes down, and hopefully incorporate that into what you're doing back home? Definitely Mike G. Everyone's saying Mike that. G. Everyone loves my Shout out to Mike G, man. Everyone Shout out Mike, Mike G. G. Shout out Mike G. Because I've always had a, like a fascination with not just the skills aspect, but the strength and conditioning yeah. aspect. So I like to take stuff from all of them. I have, like, so the Drew Hanlon, Paul, and then Mike G, like, in my in my library it's just all their videos screen recorded i've like been my own guinea pig testing their stuff so like i'm ready to like pick their brain tomorrow i'm excited for that tomorrow's gonna be a fun day i can't i mean look the last couple hours have been great i mean we have a full day tomorrow to do this stuff to learn from everyone and we just all know each other better from these runs so it's been a fun time man we're, going, we're heading back to the hotel now it's yeah. been real i appreciate you bro sensei man what's going on what's going on brother how you feeling today man dude today's been a great day it's been a blessing, man. We learned from some legends. We, we, I mean, the, the, I mean, the list goes on. Drew Hanlon, Tim Martin, all these guys. Definitely, right? I don't want to forget anyone. Coleman, obviously, putting this all together. Money to use the detailed gym. Awesome space. How'd this all happen? And how did you even get here? Um, to be honest with you, uh, it was a parent of a um, child I trained who plays for uh, one of the top high schools in New York. Nice. Um, he reached out to me. He was like, hey, like, you should take the opportunity to get better and meet these guys. You know, I've always spoke about how um, I wanted to improve my craft. So he sent me the link. I didn't have the money, but um, I took a chance and everything aligned and I ended up here. That's, that's, that's incredible. That's the kind of stories, right? I mean, you're putting in the work, you're making the investment, good things are gonna come out of that. Mm -hmm. how, did this, how did tonight happen? Oh, dude, dude, like, cause you, you were just, you, come on now, so, come on. Funny enough, I never met Coleman Ayers on, until today, actually. So. Um, there was a bunch of guys I was meeting. There's, a, there's great individuals. I mean, there's a, there was a professionals all around us. So as I'm walking around, I'm just talking to guys, and um, everybody was talking about how they wanted to hoop. So I go to him. I'm just like, hey, man, you know, you, we could break in that new gym for you. So he was just like, hey, if you could get 10 guys, um, I'll let you use the gym. So I was, I found 10 guys. Well, we found 14. More than that, more than that. Found more, and then he was real cool with it, man. And um, I ended up actually, uh, here we are. To, here we are now, man. Like. It was just um, pure chance, but um, I'm blessed to that uh, Coleman Aries is a great dude and he gave me the opportunity to uh, use this facility. Definitely. So what were the uh, so uh, great night tonight? We're maybe uh, probably an even better day tomorrow. You're still oh, trying to come back for runs after. Well, a lot of us are flying home, but you're, you're still going to be here. Yes, you're still going to be here. What, are you, what, what was the biggest takeaway from today and what are you most excited for about tomorrow? Um, the biggest takeaway I'll take, um, I took from today is this. Don't look at things as a surface value. Nice. Um, ask more questions because when you ask the question, you become the answer. And um, fall in love with the game, fall in love with progress. And, you know, there's, there's so much you can learn and you can learn from anybody. You know what I mean? More importantly, just uh, have a childlike mentality. Stay curious and more importantly, love the game and be true to the game because it will be true to you. If you keep on living those principles, you're going to go far, man. I, I can't wait to see you, it. Thank you for your time, brother. God bless you. I thank you. <laughs>
right? Like, yo, that's a sensei kick. <laughs> social media platforms at Gen Z Hoops. You can tune in and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and every other podcast platform on the planet. Get ready for the next episode.